Here's a solid mechanics problem that first year engineering students might encounter when they do things like mechanical or aerospace engineering or civil engineering. And if you'd like to see anything similar to this on the channel or if you have any suggestions for any specific problems or topics that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. So let's read the question and let's see how we can tackle this. We've got a beam which is uh, simply supported and we're asked to find the normal force, the shear force and the moment at point C. Okay, now as with any solid mechanics problem, the first thing that I recommend doing is finding the reaction forces. Okay, and I'll first draw the beam and then we're going to think what kind of reaction forces can occur. Okay, so we have a force of, this is 10 kilonewtons, and we have another force of 15 kilonewtons, which is acting like that. And we know some distances as well. So we know this distance is, um, or maybe the distance is a bit off if I think about it. Okay, so this is 10 kilonewtons, and this distance is about 1.5 meters and then we have 1.5 meters from the other end and then in between there are three meters and then here we we have a point c which is right in the middle of that three meter section and the first thing that uh, we should do as mentioned earlier is finding the reaction forces okay now because here we have A simple support we would expect a vertical reaction as well as a horizontal reaction and at the other end called B in this case we only have a vertical reaction so this is let's call this RY1 and this RY2 right because at B we have a roller support and roller supports don't provide any horizontal reactions or any reactions in the direction or parallel to the beam okay so let's first write the um, the horizontal force equilibrium so we have that the sum of forces acting in the x direction that's horizontally is equal to zero and because this is the only reaction force this is the only force in the horizontal direction we have that rx is equal to zero okay and then we do the same thing for the vertical forces. So we add up all the vertical forces and the sum should be equal to zero. And the sign convention that I'll use is the following. So all forces that act upwards are going to be positive and all forces acting downwards are going to be negative. So this sum therefore becomes Ry1 and then plus Ry2. And then we have two more forces, but those are acting downwards. And those are the 10 and the 15. And because they're acting downwards, I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to say minus 10 and then minus 15. And this equals 0. Okay. So Ry1 plus Ry2 is equal to 25. Now, we still don't have enough information because this is one equation with two unknowns. So we need something more to actually be able to find Ry1, Ry2. And for this, we're going to use equilibrium of moments. Okay. So because this beam is not moving, it means that the moments acting on the beam cancel each other out. So to do that, the way in which uh, I recommend tackling this part of the problem is take moments about a section of the beam or take moments about a point where multiple forces cancel out okay now in this case rx is zero so it doesn't really matter if you take moments about this point or about this point because either of those are going to cancel out either ry1 or ry2 so in this case i'll just use um this point as my imaginary hinge basically and let's call this point P, because why not? And then I'll say that the sum of moments about P 
is going to be equal to zero. We need this for equilibrium, okay? Now, as with the vertical forces, we have to establish a sign convention. So what I usually do is I say all the counterclockwise moments are positive and all the clockwise moments are negative, okay? So let's see what we have about point P. First of all, this force doesn't produce any moment because it's passing through that imaginary thing. Uh, now we have this 10 kilonewton force here, and this one is producing a clockwise moment. Okay, so we write minus 10 and then multiply by the moment arm, which is 1.5. And then we have this 15 kilonewton force, which is also producing a clockwise moment. So that is minus again. 15 times, and the moment time is 1.5 plus 3, which is 4.5. And then we have this reaction force, which is producing a counterclockwise moment. So this is going to be plus Ry2 multiplied by, and now we have the full length of the beam, which is 6. And the whole thing could be equal to 0. Okay, this is one equation with one unknown, so we should be able to find ry2 quite easily so this is going to be equal to 15 and then plus 15 times 4.5 which is 67.5 okay so ry2 should be equal to 13.75 now uh, keep the units in mind those are kilonewtons okay Right, so we found the reaction force at uh, the other end, okay? And now we can use this equation here to find what Ry1 is. So Ry1 is simply just 25 minus Ry2. Yeah, so it's 25 minus what we just found, 13.75. And we should get a value of, let's see, 11. 0.25 kilonewtons. Okay, so we found the only reaction forces. So there are two reaction forces, both of them are vertical, and now we can proceed with finding the force at C, the forces and the moments at C. Okay, and to do that, I will take a cross section at C. Okay, so I'll Click the beam, I'll, I'll consider a free body diagram of the first half of the beam. And this is what we have. So this is the first half of the beam. So I'm starting from the left where I have my support, my reaction at A. So I'm gonna draw that here. So this is, uh, I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna call this RA actually. And then we have this 10 kilonewton force which is acting in the middle of the section right so this is 10 kilonewtons acting downwards and because this is a free body diagram in other words because we separated this half of the beam from the other half of the beam we have to draw all the forces and moments that occur on this cross section here okay so in general we have a shear force we have some tension, some normal force, and then we have a bending moment. Okay, and let's try to find all of them. Now, let me also add the distances. So this is 1.5 meters. This is also 1.5 meters. And let's start with the horizontal force M, because that's the easiest to find. So we have the sum of forces acting in the X direction is zero, therefore n equals to zero, okay? And that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, this is the only force acting horizontally and the sum of all horizontal forces has to be zero, so this force is zero, okay? Now let's find the shear force. Let's find this S here. And to do that, I will say that the sum of forces in the y direction is zero, keeping our sign convention from before. So we have that Ra minus 10 and then minus s equals zero okay so s i drew it as acting downward so i'm just putting a minus sign here 
So let's see what S is. And if we rearrange, we get that S is equal to RA minus 10. Now RA was 11.25 minus 10. And then it's, that gives us an S value of 1.25 newtons. Okay. So that's the shear force at that point C here. Okay. And the last thing to do is to find the bending moment that we labeled as M. Okay. And we do, to do that, we will take moments about any point, right? Because if you take moments about any point, uh, you should still get a sum of zero. And we're going to take moments about point C in this case. So I'll say that the sum of moments about point C equals zero. And let's see what we have. So about point C, this shear force doesn't produce a moment because it's passing through point C. So what we have is we have this RA force that's producing a moment, which is clockwise. So we have minus, and then RA was 11.25. So we have 11.25 multiplied by the moment time, which is 3 meters. And then we have this force here, which is producing a counterclockwise moment. So this is plus 10 multiplied by 1.5 and then we have this bending moment here which i labeled as m and i also labeled it as counterclockwise so this is plus m equals zero so now we rearrange to find the bending moment at c and that is 11.25 times 3 let me just first write it like that and then minus 15 so the moment is, let's see what we have here, 18.75 kilonewton meters, okay? Keep the units in mind. So we have kilonewtons because we're using all the forces are in kilonewtons and then we have times meter. And that's the moment at, that's the bending moment at point C. Okay, that's the inner bending moment. That's the bending moment within the beam at point C. And the fact that it's positive, right, this is also an important thing to note. The fact that it's positive, it means that our initial assumption that it's counterclockwise is true, okay? Uh, similar with the shear force. So the fact that the shear force is positive, this means that our original assumption that the shear force is acting downwards was correct, okay? So the conclusion is that at point C, we have the following three things. We have a normal force of zero. We have a shear force of 1.25 kilonewtons that this shear force is acting downwards. And we have a bending moment, which was 18.75 kilonewton meters, okay? And this moment is acting counterclockwise. And that's the end of the question.